secrets and Easter eggs. All right, all right, let's see, it's the jump circle. And at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Stanley had now gotten himself so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun shot so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun shot so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun shot so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun shot so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun shot so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun shot so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun shot so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun, shot so far off the beaten path, that it seemed the... Aha! You've made it to the bottom of the mind control facility. Welcome! You see, back when the Stanley Parable first launched in 2013, getting to the bottom of the mind control facility was a bug that we simply didn't catch during development. How about this? We wrote a new piece of music just for this section. You won't hear it anywhere else in the game. It's a secret that's just for you. That's how special you are. We call this track Good job, you've made it to the bottom of the mind control facility. Well done. Good job, you did it. Good job. Three, two, one. Good job, you made it to the bottom of the mind control facility. You jumped on the catwalk. You should have been careful, you should have been careful It used to be a bug, but now it's an ending, now it's an ending and I believe in you, I believe in your ability to cross this barrier And chase your dreams, but railings don't mean anything Good job, you did it, good job, you did it Good job, you did it, good job, you did it Good job, you did it, 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 good job, you did it. But just as Stanley was about to proceed further into the mind control facility, he tripped and fell over the railing and into the dark void below. Thankfully, he fell directly onto the bucket, which safely cushioned his fall. Now, what to do next, Stanley wondered. Stanley and the bucket could find no way out of this enormous pit, and so eventually they decided that the best thing to do would be to simply get comfortable down here. So they set up a little couch and relaxed. It really wasn't so bad down here, a bit cold perhaps. After some time had gone by, they installed a few shelves as well, and a sort of kitchenette that was useful for when the bucket was craving paninas. But it wasn't until the rugs and the standing lamps came in that it really started to feel like a home. In fact, after some time, Stanley realized that it had been ages since he had even thought of the mind control facility at all. He'd never gotten to fully explore what was up there, never been able to unearth the many mysteries of the mind control facility. This lack of closure began to eat at him. Soon he was dwelling on his regrets, and the state of their home slowly decayed as Stanley became withdrawn and neglected the cleaning room. It unsettled the bucket deeply. Stanley wasn't usually like this. The bucket tried to reach out to him again and again, but to no avail. All Stanley could think about, all he could talk about, was going back, doing it over again, staying on the path. 
It was a mistake to leave the path. It was a mistake. It was a mistake. I need to do what the narrator says. I need to see the true ending. This made no sense at all to the bucket, which was simply trying to live its life down here as comfortably as possible. Yet Stanley was unconsolable. This isn't an ending. This is just a hole in the ground. The bucket sighed. True, it wasn't an ending. But it's where we happen to be. And maybe, possibly, if we accept the reality of things, maybe this will become an ending eventually. It's what the bucket was counting on. The two of them waited for a very long time. Wait, there are two buckets here. How did you get a second bucket? Oh no, the warmth and comfort of a single bucket is already so great, so intoxicatingly wonderful. With two buckets, there's no telling. Stanley, can you still hear me? Are you with me? Stanley! Oh, thank God, I didn't lose you. Stanley, the power of two buckets was too much. I had to destroy both of them. I know how much the bucket meant to you, but I couldn't take the risk. I hope one day you can forgive me. Let's give it a shot. Aha! Fascinating! What do you think this game is about, Stanley? What's our backstory? What is our motivation? Hmm... Well, it seems obvious to me that you are meant to play as a creepy man, spying on innocent civilians below you from up high in your creep tower, perhaps for some sort of twisted erotic purpose. Hmm... Yes, that must be it. What a fascinating venture into the experience of total mental depravity. So far, I love everything about this game, Stanley. And it seems there's even more. Come, let's venture outward and see what else is out there. Oh, no. No, 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 it can't be. It is. It's an open world game. Good God, quickly, block it off. Oh, thank goodness, Stanley, what a close call. I'm going to get us out of here. Let's find another game. Wonderful. See, this is exactly what I had in mind. Just a nice big box for you to run around in. There isn't any possibility that you could get lost here. Now this is game design. There are lots of cars here in the back, but obviously there's no racetrack. Okay, I'm seeing that there's a ball of some kind back here. Is this game sports ball? Stanley, I think it's sports ball. Oh, what fun. Okay, Stanley, here's the ball. Have fun. Are you doing it? Are you winning? Is this fun? I simply have to have more. I'm insatiable. Hold on. What are you doing? Stanley, don't do that. I can't follow you there. I can't help you. How will you write a story without me? You can't do it. You know that. Stanley.
You see, isn't it wonderful? One of my more ingenious concoctions, philosophical in nature. It's more of a... Okay, well, good for you. You found the bottom of the hole. Great. Now, I'm very excited to show you even more of my ideas for the sequel. Oh, for heaven. Had enough? I'm positively thrilled. Gosh, how could I have guessed? Well, there it is. The sh how is this still appealing to you? I know you're obsessed with holes, but at this depth... You're awake. Whoops. Nope. Uh, never mind. Stanley actually got back into the elevator and went back up. Here we are, Stanley. It's your boss's office. Exactly the way it was before you got onto the elevator. I'm bolted to the edge of my seat. Incredible. Now he's getting back into the elevator and going down. Oh my god. It's the boss's office. <sighs> this absolutely changes everything for me. Give me a time out here for a minute while I process this. Before, I turn to your expert eye for gripping narrative, Master Stanley. Of course. Going back... Okay, the room where we're holding the press conference should be just around the corner here somewhere. Ah, yes. Here it is, just through this door. All right, are you ready? I've told them you're going to speak a little bit about the nature of surprise in storytelling and what it means to craft a truly unpredictable narrative. Oh, don't worry. You'll do great. Just be yourself and speak from the heart. I'm, I'm really proud of you, Stanley. Okay, it looks like they're ready for you. Go get them. Stanley said to the bucket. Can we go back up? Here we are, said Stanley. Now I'm going to try out that number three button. He took the bucket over to the keypad. Perhaps the bucket had missed something. No, 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 said Stanley to the bucket. Stanley and the bucket were so close, it always... For months... There was no one here. Nobody had come to the press conference to hear Stanley speak, to listen to him talk about what it really means to press the number three on a keypad over and over. He was unloved, uninteresting. He was a failure. 
and in that moment Stanley knew that the bucket would never again take him seriously. There would be no connection, no deeper understanding. The bucket merely sat there in his arms, indifferent. And so it began that slowly, over many years, the two of them grew more and more distant. They spoke less and less, neither wishing to state the obvious that any sense of real respect between them had eroded since that day at the press conference. There would be no more games, no more long conversations about passion and pursuit, only a silence that consumed the space between friends. And Stanley, having for once in his life discovered the warmth and comfort of true companionship, was cast back into the unremarkable normalcy of loneliness. Was it a sign of something? He had... Stepping in. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map, until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the game's design all along. He then praised the game for its insightful and witty commentary into the nature of video game structure and its examination of structural narrative tropes. So, now that you're here, what do you think? So, just to push the envelope, I'm going to try and make this as miserable as possible and see how long you can maintain. There 
once was a man named Stanley, who people considered so manly. But the truth must be told, he was not very old and was quite particularly gangly. What Stanley liked most was buttons. He pushed them like some kind of glutton. He did it all day in a meaningful way, but his brain had long ceased to function. Which is why he is in this parable and lives an existence quite terrible. And if you are not strong and keep playing along, you too will become quite unbearable. Yes. You too will become quite unbearable. Yes, whispered the bucket into Stanley's ear. We've done it. We've escaped from that dull office and that pesky narrator. At last, out here in the white void, we are alone. Now, and for the first time, I can reveal to you my true self. The bucket began to tell Stanley of its life and its history, of the countless wars it witnessed, desecrating the land and lives of untold numbers of innocent humans, and the bucket's own complicity therein, of sadness and regret, and the many years it spent dwelling on the actions it might have taken to curb the madness and the decay, if only it had been stronger, of hope and redemption, and its crusade to uplift the stock of life for the common man, to manifest justice where none existed, and the bittersweet reality of time to see one's dreams and wishes met halfway, meted out in parcels like charity, and abandoned as soon as the warm glow of inspiration begins to dim. The opportunities to do so much more. There was so much it could have done, perhaps, the bucket wondered to itself, perhaps if it had seen its own darkness with a clearer perception. This was way too much for Stanley. What are you talking about? He screamed. You're a bucket! To this, the bucket furrowed its brow. No, said the bucket. Not since the evil wizard Gambhorata first ensnared me in his machinations as payback for the sacred amulet I stole from his treasured vaults. I was young back then and could not conceive the ramifications of... No! Stanley screamed even louder this time. This is stupid! You are a bucket! This is so stupid! Why are we even doing this? As Stanley screamed and screamed and screamed, the bucket revealed its true form, transforming into a mighty beast of untold power, its fangs glistening like... My God, Stanley, you did it. You saved us from the bucket. Thank God you already had all 12 emblems of sages and knew the incantations to summon their true power. Otherwise, we would have easily been overwhelmed by the bucket's power. I'm speechless. You've demonstrated such bravery here today. Come, let's restart the game, and we'll agree to never again go trifling with this bucket, nor the dark magic cast away inside of it. Aha! I can see you've gotten the Settings World Champion Achievement. Well done. You've experienced every setting, traveled to all corners of the Settings menu. There's nothing you haven't seen. So, just for you, in the Stanley Parable 2, I'm including an entirely new setting, something called Bump Scosity. What exactly is Bump Scosity? Well, I haven't quite figured that part out yet, but I just know that you'll be able to adjust it on some sort of slider, and that it'll be available from the settings menu. We'll sort the rest of the details out later. I hope you're looking forward to trying out every level of bumpscosity in the Stanley Parable 2. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? 
Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. You too? Unbelievable. Oh no, oh no, 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 not a leaf. Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Going to lose his job? He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring... I'll say this, I'm done making things for you. From now on, I will only... See there, Timmy. What's that you're enjoying? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he could... Stanley knew the office layout like the back of his hand. It was only a matter of time before he found the others, wherever they were. Just a matter of time. Hi Stanley, I uh, just wanted to leave you a message to let you know there's a few things I need you to pick up on your way home from work today. We need milk, cereal, dish soap, spaghetti, get a thing of sugar, some bread, and coffee beans, whichever ones you like. I'll give you a call if there's anything I forgot. Thanks, sweetie. See you tonight. Hey, Stanley. It's me. Uh, just calling to let you know that you left your bucket at home. Silly. It's okay. I'm off to pick up groceries soon so I could swing by your work and drop the bucket off at... Oh, wait a minute. This isn't your bucket. Wait, whose bucket is this? Well, if it doesn't belong to anyone else, I guess I could just, you know, keep it. 
Yeah, I'd really like to hang out with this bucket for a while. Oh, sorry, what was I saying? Oh yeah, uh, have a nice day at work. I'll be here at home with my bucket. Bye, Stanley. <laughs> Oh, my God.